Steven and uh, Steven. They have a right to call Tim Cast <laughs> Trans Cast Mr. <laughs> Steven. Steven, I have a gift to you. Wait a minute. Stop everything. Let's watch some Steven. Stevie. Mikey Redbar. Steven, Steven. They're fans of mine, but I'm even bigger fans. Mikey of Redbar. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Steven Steven. I'm Steve. I'm Steven. This is an action packed episode. We got a lot to talk about. We got the machine yep. movie by Burt Kreischer. And then the rest of the episode is just Rick Glassman, pretty much. Yes. So And some other stuff too. I found something else that was kind of funny because every now and then I like to pull out some sports knowledge that mm-hmm. I do know sometimes. And uh the blind side. Uh yes. so it turns out wasn't a true story. I, I guess we, I kind of wanted to just start with that because I found this podcast. So let me back up. The Blind Side's not a real movie. Yeah. Uh, I, really, none of the biopics are like real movies. I don't know why everybody is surprised by this news that one biopic is, <laughs> yeah. is inaccurate. This is all of them. But uh, I guess it's like it, it's much more sinister where the public is led to believe that Mike. Big Mike Brown Mm -hmm. was just wandering (laughs) they streets, couldn't even read, couldn't figure out how to do anything, and Sandra Bullock came along, saved his life, changed it overnight. Now he's a great celebrity uh, athlete, and um, he lived (laughs) happily ever after. But really, what his parents put him in a conservatorship, right? Mm -hmm. And have been the only ones profiting off of his story. Yeah. But now he's saying like enough is enough now that i (laughs) now that i know now that somebody's explained to me what a conservatorship is i've realized it's bad mr chauvin could you please get your knee off my (laughs) neck it's one of those sort of situations so yeah i don't know is this so why do you believe this guy michael Orr is who we're talking about big michael Orr. uh i guess i don't know if i believe him and i also don't know if the parents are necessarily evil people i mean i i, I don't know because i understand why like a self-absorbed parent would think well we rescued him from the streets he's a professional football player because of us yeah we've given him enough we've given him his dream so why not let us make money on the side i could almost understand why they would fall into that line of thinking they're still sneaky with the conservatorship and stuff like that but even then, I don't know. I don't I don't know who I side with more. Well, we're going to have to embrace debate on this one because I am on the other side. I think he's just an idiot. <laughs> that he's just he needs to be conserved. So the big plot point from the movie, and maybe I've got it twisted. I haven't seen the movie since I was like 9 mm-hmm. or whenever it came out. See, when did that come out? I think 2008. Okay. Back in 2008, I remember this plot point where he's going around, he's visiting schools. 2009. And his parents are trying to get him well, maybe they aren't trying to get him to go to Ole Miss. That, I don't know. But remember, his parents are like boosters, like the biggest boosters in the country for mm-hmm. Ole Miss. And he's in the meeting, and he like runs out, and he's like, why'd you guys try to trick me? <laughs> why'd you guys try to trick me go to your school? And they're like, we weren't trying to pressure you, Michael. We were just trying to say, if you want to go there, it's okay. Yeah. So that part, maybe the reality, it's unclear, mm. you know, whether or not they were trying to force him to go there. Yeah, yeah. But if he was able to be that confused back then, he's going to be this confused now. Yeah. And I think they did adopt him. Yeah. And also something else people have been mentioning about this situation is that uh, a lot of the claims are outright lies. Like he said that they only let him live with him for like six months, but they have like years of photos with him just progressively Mm -hmm. getting bigger and bigger. And the other thing too is just because he was like an incredible athlete and maybe they were making money on the side. But they didn't know they'd make money. I mean, what, they were going to disown him when he turned 18 if he wasn't a professional athlete, yeah. you know? I mean, there's no way. Like, think there's like 100 colleges with Division One football. There's no way. Most of those players don't go to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And back then you couldn't get paid, at least not. Like, it was under the table probably, but yeah. yeah. No, that's very true. That's a, that's a good point because, yeah, why would they go through the trouble of, of all those hoops if uh, there's such a slim chance of him actually being a professional athlete. Yeah, maybe something. Maybe there was some internal drama that we're not aware of, and now he's like, I'm pulling the plug. I'm going to just say that y'all be my slave masters. Mm-hmm. Or maybe years of getting hit in the head <laughs> has led him to be a little delusional. That's true. That so, happens to him. Yeah. Uh, I was also going to say, um, fuck, what was I going to say? I'm sorry. That's okay. People, people are saying that. Oh, his book came out that day. He, oh, he had a book coming out. Okay. So it okay. seems all too, you know, convenient to release the book at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. 
Yeah, that's fishy. That's too fishy for me. And, and people are saying that Sandra Bullock should have her Oscar like rescinded <laughs> because of it. If anything, she should have her Oscar doubled because she fooled all of us. Yeah. You know, she's that. I hate Sandra Bullock, but if she's able to convince all of us that she saved the black race single handedly from that. Again, I also haven't seen the movie in a long time. So, mm-hmm. you know, the details are a little fuzzy, but no, that's how it was presented in the yeah, movie. <laughs> the, the scene, the one scene that, uh, <laughs> uh, I tried recounting the scene to Steve at last night, and she was like, that's not even how it went at all. But I don't think she's seen the movie. Well, hold on. I'd, I'd like to hear your take yeah. on it. From what I understand, Michael does run away. Mm-hmm. And so the mom goes into the hood. Yes. And I pulled the scene up, too. And she's like, have you seen Michael? And they're like, man, get your, get your ass out of here, bitch. Yeah, and, and they like start like kind of blowing kisses at her. Yeah, she's yeah. walking off like, mom, I'll fuck you. And while she's walking, and when she hears bitch, she stops and turns around, and she's like... If you ever threaten my son again, I'm a fucking call cops on you or whatever. You know, she like threatens them. And it's like that totally didn't. Ha- they would have all just shot her and raped her immediately. See, I, yeah, I don't think that happened. Actually, I think what happened was she went into a bar downtown in this black neighborhood <laughs> and she locked the front door and she single handedly beat up every single one of them. Mm, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's how I remember Real it. John Wick style. No, that's a good scene. I guess I don't remember what actually happens, though. She basically just tells them off, but it's like they, because they called her bitch, but it's like, you know, Frau is how a German says woman and bitch is like how people from the hood say woman, yeah, you know? Yeah. So like they weren't even being insulting and the guy, the way the guy delivered the line, he wasn't even saying it like you bitch. He yeah. was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever, bitch. Whatever, ma'am. So it was like unwarranted for her to get her knee out on all of them. Yeah, so. yeah seriously, I didn't know she had so many knees. To, yeah, to give around, pass should, around. Maybe we should do a. We should get. We'll buy the book and we'll do a reading of it. Yeah, and maybe we'll see uh, if it was all just a publicity stunt. That would be sad though, too. I mean, like imagine like throwing your adopted family under the rug for like a shitty book. I mean, that's well, and also horrible. there's no way he was able to write his own book. I mean, right? They probably wrote it for him, did his homework for him, and or he just opened it up and it's just drawings with <laughs> crayon. <laughs> It's like what number he is. Yeah. This um, is me reading the audio book. It's like his name, his address, and like his parents' like phone number. Like, you know, when you're in kindergarten, you have to like fill that mm-hmm. stuff out. <laughs> Man. So maybe there'll be a sequel. I don't know. Blindside 2. But we can get... Here's, Extra blindsided this time. How, how, here's how I got my news about it. So mm-hmm. uh, well, there was a podcast that did a show on it today. And this podcast has... Yeah, give Michael his reparations already. Seriously. He deserves it. He does. He worked real hard being in the NFL for like three years. Oh, so was he even a good football no, player? he was shit. Oh, so this is another thing. It's like I didn't get to make the money I wanted to during my NFL career, so now let me start. How else can I make money? Telling lies about Sandra Bullock, your mommy. <laughs> America's mommy. All right, I found it. I found it. I found it. Yes, this podcast... The way this show starts, I mean, we could take some notes. Let me make sure I'm recording, too. What's the freaking uh, quick time? Quick time. I hope you have a quick time when you use quick time player. Hater. Screen record. And, okay, we're off. Five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin State. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast. Bang, 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 smash bang, bang, that like button. Smash bang, that bang, 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 notification bang, 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 I mean, this is like the most Zoomer edition. Church announcement for me. Cleveland. Get oh, they're married. Yes, yes. He's got a book. Once it cuts to him, you'll see they, they have a book together. I know nothing about these people, by the way. I learned about him today, trying to learn about Michael Orr. Once it cuts to him, it's going to show you what his book is called. It's Marriage Be Hard. <laughs> wow. Man. Y'all know it ain't easy. Marriage Be Hard. And then when they get to the blind side part, this part's funny. So here's their way of retelling this story. I'll play this for you so you can get caught up. I'm not a lawyer but I just read the 15-page petition from Michael Orr. I- so she, so he just plays a TikTok of somebody else regurgitating the information. Sure, sure. It's, like an, it's like two minutes long. He, they, don't, they don't cut in at any point. They just sit and watch the whole thing. That was all you're going to show me from that? Yeah. I mean, it was worth it. I want to look more into him. They have 341,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy just because... 
I mean, there's a whole other black YouTube that we didn't even know about. Yeah, that's true. Hey, yo, man, I'm Wallow, and this is my co-host, Gilly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that intro was insane. I, like, couldn't believe it. It reminded me of, uh, like, those N- MLG edits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was yeah. expected to see, like, a hit marker and, like, a Call of Duty, like, quick scoper in the middle of that open. But, yeah, I'm, maybe I went a little too out for that one, but it gave me a good giggle. Should we get oh no the machine the machine guys we didn't even talk about the most important yeah the part. movie of the summer of the year maybe yes and i you know how we feel about burt kreischer so i didn't i honestly didn't want to go see the movie in theater because i didn't want there to be the chance that we participated in the movie breaking even or even doing well at the box office that's how much i dislike well i was really worried we'd go and burt would be at the movie theater to yeah. take photos with all his fans on <laughs> yeah. opening day to share on social media and have nobody show up and i didn't want us to be the only two there with bert because it would have been really awkward after all the things we've said about him on this podcast yeah, it would have been awkward if we tried to like record a podcast during the movie and like had him as the guest like he he wouldn't have been down for it but so this was your birthday movie this is what we watched on your birthday yeah I chose and you know this. we watched it together because it's a bad movie i'm never invited to any of the good movies you no. go and see <laughs> no. it always has to be the lizzo documentary yeah, bert yeah. it's just fat people things that yeah, we, that we watch together, but we watch it well together. Yeah, uh, I couldn't have watched it without you. <laughs> that's true. That's that's what I mean too. Like, so I, I'll be honest when I say that this is literally the worst movie that I've ever seen in my life. And I, it's like, I honestly wanted a part of it to be somewhat redeeming, but it was so bad. I we had to turn up the speed. We had to sp- have it at like one point five times speed. Oh, we did end up watching point. it at one point two five. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was awful. I don't even know where to begin. Do you want to start? Um, yeah, sure. So the two big jokes throughout the movie is that there are references to Austin Powers mm-hmm. and Steve Urkel. And uh, did I do that? Yes. The Russian mob. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to do the voice. So. Bert like befriends the Russian mob. And they do the thing in Tropic Thunder where they're like, we don't have any movies in Russia. We only have family members. Did I do that, Steve Urkel? Like the, the Russian yeah. accents are so bad. That's literally what it sounds like. And they try to edit the movie like it's John Wick, but it's it's like Burt Kreischer taking his shirt off, yeah, and he's yeah. like speed walking towards someone, firing a machine gun at him. And There's he, never a scene where he's not covered in sweat, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't. It's disgusting. Edit, could not edit that out. And when the Russians speak Russian, they u- they use like YouTube shorts, like cl- captions to fill in oh, for right, the Russian right, yeah. dialogue. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. It's it's awful. And yeah, look at our YouTube shorts just for reference and to get our view count up and you'll yeah. see what we're talking about. It only works if you like subscribe and like like a bunch of our videos too to help out the algorithm. But yeah, uh, the, the dialogue and the jokes were just so bad too. It's like, let's, it's like they would write a terrible joke and then they would go okay well where can we hear this joke oh in therapy okay so this scene's going to be in therapy it's like yes there was no reason for many of the scenes to happen aside from the worst joke you've ever heard and the other thing too is they like tried to drop in these references that were like <laughs> I already yeah 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 i mean it's like the woke references but it's not that they're being woke so they just would make a joke and be like what that's like the biggest thing on tiktok right now yes yeah you don't know the what TikTok. tiktok is and then Wait, there's whoa, whoa. Am I in a TikTok right now? They have a gun to his head. They literally, like Russian mobsters, have gun, a gun to his head and goes, Oh, is this a TikTok prank? <laughs> yes. It's like, jeez. Uh, and then, you know, there'll be something else that's like, Oh, you know, we, we have a different view of feminism in America. Yeah. You know, just yeah. shit like that. And it's like, why do you need to throw in those buzzwords? It's not cute. And they had a toxic masculinity reference. Mark yeah. Hamill probably said it. And then the other thing, too, about it was there was an edibles scene. Of course, because that's the that's like a reoccurring bit in every new comics bit or uh, specials, right? They always have to reference it. They always have to share an edible story. Well, not just that, but that's like been the comedy movie trend since like Judd Apatow, mm, like Pineapple true. Express. Like all yeah. of them have to have some weed element and then a psychedelic tripping out thing that doesn't make sense because everybody in the audience has definitely smoked weed. Right. They've tried pot. OK. <laughs> and. You know, but then why does it have to be this weird psychedelic thing? But then he talks to his his younger self. And yeah, I think, you know, they miss an opportunity because Bert is very unique in the sense that, like, the way he lies so consistently, like, he is he has such a deranged mind. They don't have to put him on drugs. It's like they should have just shown us 
what's it like being this fat, insane person? Yeah, yeah. they should have done like a psychological thriller where we sort of get put through Bert's mind yes. and we don't realize what's true or fake in yeah, the movie. Yeah. And it blurs very quickly when he's meeting himself. Yeah. It, and then we don't know if it's time travel. We don't know right. if it's drug induced. We don't know if it's because he's actually dead. Mm -hmm. And because, and well, and this is my favorite scene. Uh, is when, you know, Mark Hamill kicks him off the back of the train. Mark Hamill plays his oh dad gosh. in the yeah, movie yeah. and he kicks him off the train. But like, I, I'll let you describe the special effects. I mean, it just... It's like they took a picture of him at a green screen. So they had like Burt Kreischer PNG and then they just took that life-size PNG of him and then shrunk it down. Like instead of having a, a, a stunt double fallout. Yeah, it was a really bad special effect. It was like, yeah, it was bad. You just they just took the picture and they just shrunk it. Of what him. were other elements of it? I mean, the color grading was weird. Like at one time, wasn't everybody's face purple? Yeah. Yeah. They tried to make it look like a John Wick like nightclub but for <laughs> the whole movie. It was so bad. Um, but then it's like crazy because the budget on the movie was 20 million. It made back 10 million. Yeah. But it's like, what did 20 million go toward? Like the special effects were terrible. Like like Bert's diet, like his food on set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think it had to have gone to just putting Mark Hamill on screen and that's it. And then they tried to make like a, a, a conflict with his family. But whenever he so like the start of the movie, his family hates him and then he gets kidnapped by the Russian mafia and his family never talks to him. Like he never even mentions his family while he's in Russia. Yeah, and then yeah. he just comes back and he's like, honey, I love you and our problems are solved. But they don't even talk about the problems no, that they in had. In fact, they don't even know that he was kidnapped. That's like the right. joke at the end, you know, where they're like, Dad, what are you hugging me so much for? Like, yeah. you know, I've just been gone for a night. It's like, you have no idea. He's like, I'm 45 years old. I got it. I got <laughs> trapped by the Russian mafia. And there's how the story went. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it begins it. and ends in therapy. Yeah. So he goes in therapy and he goes, I was thinking, what if instead of taking off my shirt, uh, I took off my pants and yeah. then it's like the, the therapist just face palms. Like, You've <laughs> learned nothing. He actually, he goes, uh, what if I take off my shoes? And then Rick Glassman shows up. So for our audience, what was like the main thread? Cause I already forgot where it's like his dad was shitty to him, but then what's, what are they trying to recover again? A watch. So yeah. Okay. The Russian mafia shows up to Burt Kreischer's house like 25 years after this alleged machine story took place and they were like there is a watch we think you might have and so they take him to russia to have him look for it so while he's there trying to like recall his memory he then that's where all the flashback sequences are he's like oh oh this is where i showed the russians uh uh austin powers and then it cuts to young burt kreischer doing an austin powers impression which doesn't count by the way mm -hmm. okay and this is a side tangent real quick. When it comes to Austin Powers, he's like so ingrained into American culture that yeah, yeah. if you, and I'm not saying you should do this, but if you work at an office and you showed up on Halloween dressed as Austin Powers, mm -hmm. I think for the day you could literally get away with like sexual misconduct towards others. And people would just laugh it off because it's like, oh, Austin Powers. Like, yeah. that's my theory. So if anyone don't, I'm not saying you should go test that out. But if you do test it out, let me know how it goes. So, uh, sorry. That was your tangent. Yeah, that was my tangent. Back to the movie. So it just puts him in all these scenarios so we can see Bert whenever he was younger and, mm -hmm. and stupid. And he eventually remembers where the pocket watch was. And then his dad hates him because he gave him a pocket knife. Everything's about pockets here. Yeah. What's he pocketing? A pocket. Pu his wife's a pocket pussy. Then Bert's dad's like, by the way, I hate you because I gave you a pocket knife. And I said, if you ever lose this, I'm going to hate you. So he lost it. Yeah. But then, of course, he finds it in Russia. So then the dad loves him again. No, but the dad had the real one the whole time. He gave him a duplicate, oh, remember? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So there was really no reason to hate For him. him. To, yeah, yeah, it made no sense. <laughs> so, I mean, and that could just be a fun, that actually might be funny, but... For $20 million to go into it is the worst movie ever. Yeah. I mean, there's shittier movies, but that's almost only because of like a production restraint, like yeah. cost. And I think though, a lot of eyes were on, like a lot, I think a lot of executives were wondering about that movie because I think Burt believed he was going to kick off like the podcast Avenger cinematic universe. Cause if that I'm movie, all for it, by the way, <laughs> cause if that movie did well, we would have gotten the Tom Segura movie. No, we might still. Maybe I I don't know. I, this movie flopped though. It didn't even make back half its budget. So unless they unless one of them does a film independently and then it does well, 
then it could pick up. But I'm glad this movie flops because now we don't get to see, you know, the podcasters think that they can now just start making movies. So I'm, I'm for the downfall of well, it. Well, which one would you want to see next if we were going to just play this out? Um, like Segura, I'm not dying for. Segura is sort of like a later yeah, person Yeah, maybe, maybe Bobby Lee, just so like all those allegations about him can like come out like the day before the movie. And I would like to see him try to like wiggle out of it. Mm-hmm. No, I but, think Bobby Lee's more like, you know, like Ant-Man or something. You know, it's where it's I'm not dying to see him. We need yeah. to build up the rest of the universe. I mean, Theo. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff there. If they if they do this, I don't know. I could get behind it. They could I'll do- watch them all. Yeah, we'll watch them all. So, uh, the Bill Maher movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I don't know if I said this, but Igor is the guy that he met in Russia, and like yeah. the the in my head, every five minutes he was just looking at a new Russian person. Being like, is that Igor? That's not Igor. Yes. Is that Igor? That's not Igor. So, everyone was Igor to him. But then he does find Igor in a very beautiful, touching scene, and that's why we love the movie so yeah. much. <laughs> so I think we're going to give it a collective one out of ten. Yeah, that's because we no, don't definitely. give out zeros. So we both gave it a half star. Did you give it a half star? Yeah. And collectively, that is one. So should we just go right into Rick? Ricky Glassman. So this is a very comedian heavy do, episode do, 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 do. Uh, because Stephen <laughs> and I are doing the show. You know what I mean? But Rick Glassman is kind of a difficult, uh, what do you say? Jew. Jew to know. Don't be- worry, Rick. I'm Jewish too. And I'm, I'm going to take over and be the performer this time. Exactly. Rick Glassman's annoying because, well, what did I, I kind of have said this before, but Rick is constantly trying to get attention, but he's not aware of it. Yeah. Sometimes he does it in a clever way, but it's also in a sneaky Jewish boy bar mitzvah way. Yeah. So... It- it is like, I actually forgot I had this analogy ready to go. Mm-hmm. We were talking about iPod Touch games when we were kids. Yeah. A few episodes back. Did you ever play this game, Pocket God? Ooh, it sounds familiar. Doesn't look familiar yet. Pocket God was one of my favorite games here. And this is, so you, you, you have a little island and you can summon these little uh, aboriginals and you can do whatever you want to them. You can fling them. It'll show you here, like, if you, uh, it'll be in the next chapter. If you shake your iPod, then you'll cause an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy. You could do that, too. Make them all fall off. Anyway, the point is, Rick Glassman, (laughs) every time he does a podcast, he's doing, like, his own version of, like, Pocket God. (laughs) He (laughs) has to be in control. He chooses when the bits come in and when, you know, how long they stay for. And if he's not clued in on it, he will stop the show full sail to let everyone know that he doesn't like what's going on. He's, he really is a huge diva. And people, I think, pass it off as like, oh, he's just being funny. Like, that's his brand. But I don't think so. Because when he's around, like, his peers, even as a guest in someone else's house, mm-hmm. studio, he does the same exact thing. Which makes me think he might actually be autistic. But it's like... I mean, he is. Yeah. But... <laughs> I know he's, like, diagnosed. I don't think that's an excuse. I think the problem isn't that he's autistic. The problem is that he refuses to leave like bit playland. He can choose whether or not to be in bit playland. All right. Well, this isn't a therapy session for Rick, so I don't. I mean, but that I don't know. No, I. I'm I don't trying know that to. He can I think he can? Uh, I think he's a broken human. <laughs> so he was on the Adam Friedland show, which was very shocking because. No, I know it's weird. I wouldn't even see the overlap like in an obvious way you know like yeah. theo somebody that wouldn't go on the show like most of that community like yeah i don't know most of the comedian sphere and even if rick is sort of on the outside of that i feel like they don't overlap with adam at all right and so so for some reason rick was on and so was uh ian Fidance's girlfriend and so we've got some time stamps here we're going to walk you through and kind of demonstrate because Rick has been kind of a tough person to like showcase why he sucks. Because yeah. he doesn't always suck, too. He that which is a rare uh, case for a lot of these comedians. So let's see. So at one oh one, we've got Rick demonstrating like why he has to always have some bit prepared. So here we go, folks. He's out. He's with families. Uh, but we're sending talking him about Nick Mullen. Thoughts. We love Nick. Um, and and to replace Nick, we couldn't have just one person. That's how much of a titan he is. So we got two. We got a, a fan favorite, Jordan Jensen over here. Hello. And a fanny pack, Rick Glassman. Oh, here he is. 
And, then, and that little smile, he's got it all. Yeah. He he has the one, <laughs> two, three, the wait, say your retarded joke, and then smile like an idiot. This isn't Rick. Right. <laughs> and a fanny pack, Rick Glassman. Oh, of fucking... here he is. And you took a screenshot of this and sent it to me. I literally thought like you made something like this in Photoshop. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think any of this was real. So I was very shocked to find that it ended up being real. So this is just kind of setting the stage. So my next timestamps, the first few of these well, are... Okay, what I want yeah. to say, though, before you move on, in regards to kind of what you're saying about, like, his audience will jump in for him, be like, oh, he's just being funny, or... Yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't know what he said, but... <laughs> That's just what he does. It is, like, he's aware enough to know that this is a bit where yeah. he's, like... He's almost do better at doing, like, the late-night talk show thing than Adam is from, the like, the breaking the fourth wall and stuff. Yeah. But he's, like, so rude that it's impossible to overlook yes yes like he's and just a rude person so it's like his bits come first like you were saying he has to be in control and if like somebody goes down a path that he was not clued in on like mm -hmm. you said yeah i'm repeating you but he goes ballistic so anyway right, go on right. so at 410 uh yeah if rick isn't in on the conversation he has to just yeah take that attention and we've said that three times now <laughs> well, awesome. and then rick is in the background doing some stupid ass like Oh, uh, I don't know what's going on right now, so Froggy, I'm just going to be went, squeezing this you, water bottle. And then I went to throw him angry. I was you on the phone. You punched the machine? Mm hmm While I was on the phone, and I went, fuck you. And then I went... I mean, it's just shit like that. He does it the whole time. He can't hold a conversation with these people. And he, like, that's what I mean. It's like, can you just not be the center of attention for two seconds, even if he's doing it on purpose? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We could, like, Photoshop, like, a dick here. <laughs> no, we should. <laughs> and just put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Do, do. <laughs> Suck. Dick's in Rick's mouth. <laughs> Dick now. Dick ass man. Shit uh, ass man. 652. Great year. Uh, I've, well, I've since gotten the that's nickname hippo, plan. Then. Well, we're, I, think, I think that I haven't figured out the dynamic yet for us not to talk over each other. It's uh, tough with three, and I don't know. So I'll play that one more time. It's not tough with three because it's just like having a conversation with three normal people. But Rick, again... Not, you know, not conditioned for this. He tried, yeah, he like tried to chime in once and they were still talking and then he has to be like, no, hang on. Well, guys, real quick, time out. We got to call time out. I'm still trying to figure out how this show goes. How? You've done like 400 episodes of your own podcast. It, and But it's like with the, not to be super inside jokey, but it's like he brings this issue upon himself. He's has, he, if he had just sat there, no one would notice, but the fact that he has to stop the podcast, make this comment, then it makes everyone watching go, wait a minute, why does this guy feel like he can just chime in and like call time out whenever he wants to? So it makes him less likable. And the one defense you could give for Rick, and it's just not going to be true, so don't even listen to this, but the one defense you could give is that he's watched this show and he's seen how like there was a back and forth between Chris Cuomo and Adam, and maybe he yeah. thought it would be an interview like that, like he does with the really bad podcast girl booby mm -hmm. alt off or whatever yeah yeah slightly off boobies alt off god uniboober so yeah, yeah <laughs> r.i.p the unibomber yeah he thinks he can uh it's like when people watch like reality tv at home like man if i were on this show i would win that's what yeah he could possibly be doing that but. and so things are definitely not going if like does he even know jordan i guess he's been on the ian show the in Fidance show before, mm -hmm. hasn't he? I, I don't know. But it's like, why bring those two in? Should have brought Ian and Jordan in. Yes, exactly. Or just Ian. Yeah, I'm trying to get Ian to fuck me. Just <laughs> So if Ian, if you hear this, then let's become friends and you can promote my podcast. And maybe. Ian, Ian's actually like a good example of somebody who's like performative during other people's podcasts, but he's good about just like not being obnoxious. Like he's obnoxious, but he's so likable in how he is obnoxious. Like you can't help but laugh at it. Where, he, where Rick is just obnoxious and you're wondering like what are you doing this whole time well and ian will let other people talk and he'll let yeah. even if he like interrupts he lets people get through their stories rick doesn't want to hear your story yeah he doesn't want to even have a conversation with you for real he just wants to try to be as funny as possible but he's not he's not funny yeah <laughs> yeah Damn, fuck I you rick <laughs> He's like waiting for the next time to uh, like, he's like, when would be a good time to edit the poop joke, the doo doo, the <laughs> joke? Yeah. When can I insert my, uh, my rugs advertisement yeah. or whatever his carpet bullshit ads? His, his lampshade business. So how did him and Adam, Adam end up switching chairs? Adam went away for a minute. Yes. So it was after that clip that we did play where he's like, I'm still figuring out the dynamic here. So he calls time out and Adam says we can restart from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where they're at. Yeah. Should we restart? No. Okay. Should I do this thing again? Conducting him, pointing at him. I think we've been doing a good job. Adam, cut. 
No, 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 no. Adam, cut. No, no, no. <laughs> all right, now watch this. I'm glad I remembered this. I mean, by the way, this is what Rick does and this is what all autistic people do. I don't know. We need to stop just throwing around the A word, even though he's diagnosed. But where he's like, yep, we should restart. And then as soon as Adam starts to go with his stupid bit, it's like, obviously, they're not going to restart for real. Yeah. Or he's like, no, no, don't do it. Right, right. Yeah, that's... What what causes people to do that? I don't know. It's I like they know. just want to be heard, you know? They, they want to be heard, but they don't want people to do something about it. It's like people who reserve the right to complain about stupid shit. But the, next, we get a game of musical chairs. This is very important. So I've got some music that I've got queued up. We're going to play. How long is it going to take Rick to switch chairs once Adam gets up? Adam, cut. No, 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 no. Adam, cut. No, no, no. Adam, don't do it. Leave it what will Rick cut. do? No, keep him, keep him going. <laughs> Adam, cut. Anyway, should we take her? Immediately, he schemes on over to the next chair. Mm -hmm. He just goes right to it. Like, it's nothing. It's like he's breathing. He has to be the center of attention. Adam's gone. I will be the host now. Podcast, man. And now he pretends to be the host. Adam. And does a stupid bit. What's it like being a podcaster? Oh, I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah, I mean. Was he trying to do an Adam impression? No, no. He was just trying to take over the show. He just went right into Rick Glassman's show. He took his shoes off. So, like you mentioned about, uh, like, The Tonight Show, how he does kind of do that late night thing where he wants to, like, go meta multiple mm, times. So, this yeah. is kind of an example oh. of that. So, anyway, uh, Jordan, you rode your motorcycle here today. Did. Yeah. Did you ride side saddle or Reverse did you ride uh, dyke style? Dyke, uh, dyke style. I don't dyke know style. what's going Time on out. Here with, with your style and what balls are in the air. The first whatever many minutes, is that staying in? Because because if it's not in, I have to redo the fanny pack bit. It is, okay. So again, not even worried about the content. Wait a minute, was that bit a real bit? Because I brought, I bought a fanny pack for the fanny pack bit. Knowing your shot doesn't only offer making sure you have confidence in where you are and what yeah. it's supposed to be. Well, now he's acting like a fucking filmmaker. Yes. Place where so he makes them do an acting tight. exercise. And say, uh, say that. And then he starts directing the uh, cameraman. He's just lost a lot of money. Here, go on me for a sec. Say you just yeah. lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say that to me. And if we're tight, let me show you how I would react to that. Oh, not it's not let's say you lost a lot of money. You're like, Adam, I'd like you I to say. I love Adam right. derailing so, okay. yeah. we'll, say, we'll say why. Adam, tell me that you're sad because you lost a lot of money in, in a little further away shot. Mm. I'm sad because I lost a lot of money. <sighs> oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think that's good acting. You're wrong. Stop for one second. I'll Go closer. I'll oh. show you good acting. But let me, do, let me okay, make my point before thing? you show okay. me good you acting. Thing? Now show, let me show you tight. Now it's say it again. Aggravated. Rick, I'm I'm pretty sad because I just lost a lot of money. I'm sorry. Okay, that's not good acting, and I'll show you good acting. Okay, this okay. when Adam, I want to try next. Yeah, no, this is worth reverse. The long, no, this is a long me. clip, but I, I know how it works. Okay, go on, Rick. His camera. Let me sh let me show you good acting. Okay, by the show way me I a ask good it. show me a good acting of that. Can I try next? Yes, you can try next. But now I'm trying to show him good acting. Okay. So to him. Yeah, I know. I'm just not in a no, good sorry, mood. No, that was directing Don't Adam. question his acting. He's been in two TV shows. <laughs> sorry, I'm just in a bad mood. Why? I just lost so much money. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, okay, as an actor. Uh, I mean, like, look at his. He's so fucking pissed right now. I know, now. because Adam's owning his ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you think this is funny? This is like a joke to you right now that... You, Oh, I get it. You're in control of the bit and I'm not. And that's funny to you. It's not funny to me. Alaska. So I think the thing with Rick is, um, and the people that are fans of him and just buy into a shtick are never going to believe us on this and nobody's really going to care. But it's like he's found out because he's so, you know, he's got a Jew brain and all those things <laughs> and he's got a high functioning autism that he's like found the ultimate way to cope where mm -hmm. it's like anytime he gets mad, he can guise it through this performance yeah, and yeah. he can go and he can pretend like he's mad and derail and he can jump back in it in and out of bits. But you know, this is what people don't understand when you're listening to a podcast, when you listen to us, any mm -hmm. podcast, these things bleed through these emotions, this angry Rick face. Yeah. Uh, they come through and they're not, they're not just like, Oh, these are all famous people. They don't make these same mistakes that we do. Right. No, it is like a vulnerable moment. Like, yeah, you can see it in the eyes. You see it on the look on his face. Exactly, yeah. Okay, 1627, another example of things that he has to constantly interrupt with. Name any two numbers. Okay. Go. 
20 and 3. <laughs> Heard of them. It's a little joke. I've done it before. So there you go. Adam's over here trying to just, I don't know, talk to Jordan. And then Rick has to con pick two numbers. I got a joke. Here we go. Ready? Pick two numbers. Oh, I've heard of them before. He just has to always break. He thinks there's ice everywhere that he has to break. But yeah. there's never ice anywhere. <laughs> so I think this is probably the best display of the difference between like Adam and uh, Rick in terms of like what type of Jewish people they are. Mm -hmm. By the way, Adolf Hitler only knew about California Jews, just so you know. Yeah. So he would have loved the Adam Friedland show. So uh, Jordan says something really stupid, and the way they both react to this stupid information is very telling of the type of people they are. Let's, let's hear what this whole I just think to LA say. is 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 constantly mm -hmm. telling a lie to a fault, and New York is constantly telling a truth to a what? fault. What an interesting thing. Okay, so right there from the get go, she says something that everyone has heard before. Yeah. Notice how Adam, when Adam sees someone saying something dumb, he wants to give them more rope to hang themselves with because he understands like this is a funny opportunity. Maybe he does think that Jordan is stupid, but Rick, because of his autism and because of his, I mean, look at this stance right here. I mean, he <laughs> looks like, I, he looks like SpongeBob or something. I don't know why he, he looks like a little kid mm, yeah. waiting to get off for his mom's pick him up from like baseball practice. Adam already knows that Rick is going to react this way. So he's got the diplomatic hands up. But Rick's response to hearing something stupid is to immediately correct it. Oh, well, really? I've heard that before. That's what hey, he says. Hey, there are differences between New York and what? LA. What an interesting take. You know what I've noticed? I would rather be in New York when someone tells it to me straight, but at least I know it's authentic, than be in LA and someone's real nice to me, but behind my back they say I got a little fucking cock but he has flesh to, for you. Yeah, so then he just bits it out and they're not even, they're like, what Adam the Adam hates him, by the way. <laughs> There's one frame, I hope I like time marked it, that literally could be a painting. But to me, that's the difference between the two of them. Rick must correct Adam. Like I said, give him enough rope for the dumb person saying something dumb to hang themselves with. He'll hold out. Ricky won't. Did it hurt when you got your, your ear pierced? Did it hurt when it was two punches? My fist to your... Two... Two hits, yeah. my fist. And you, and my fist on your face and then your face on the ground. The face on the ground. Yeah, Sorry, good I job. fucked that up. That's a good yes and. Well, I just wanted to know if it hurt when he got his ear pierced. So yeah, fist to the face, fist to the ground. I remember what I was going to say. Rick, it's like instead of reading the Torah when he was a kid, mm -hmm. this is what he was reading instead. It's like these books. You remember seeing these in like the dollar bin <sighs> yeah, section? Yeah, yeah. Book of useless facts. Always ready. Actually, Adam, the saying is this. No, Adam, it's actually this, it's actually that. And Adam knows how to gaslight him at this point. He's been doing it like the whole episode, which is really funny. Yeah, another example, or like another way to prove that Rick is an asshole is if he had started this bit where somebody asked him if something you did hurt or whatever, and he went on some sideways fucking retarded thing, he would be all in on it. But instead, he yeah. keeps ignoring Adam. He can't play off of somebody else's bit. Yeah, he's like stumped because he just repeats the same thing. Like he asks the ear pierce question like again right yeah. after because he's like, oh, uh, Cannot compute, cannot keep up. Okay, and then 2217. The old pig skin? Yeah. Your dad looks yeah. a lot like you. I know it's the other way around. Can I see a picture of your dad? She has to immediately be like, by the way, I know it's the other way around. So yeah, don't, fucking don't correct me. Jump into correction mode. This one's a big jump. We go to the 41 minute mark, and it just says Adam raps. I'm a crib. She always cooking it up. We play video games <laughs> and shit. <laughs> I froze up again. Yeah, I'm starting on the hook. It's like Dancing Queen by ABBA. You know they start on the chorus. We gotta dance it. Do they start with that? Yeah, it's the only, it's, it's the only song. It's the song. only ABBA song that starts with the chorus. It's the only song, I think, that starts with the chorus ever, of all time ever. Really? Yeah, they start what with about, You Can Dance. What about Hey Now, You're an All-Star. That's not ABBA. You're right, that's Smash He doesn't Mouth. know anything. Smash Mouth. <laughs> and he doesn't start with that. He yeah. starts with One fist hits Smash Your Mouth. Wants. And one smashes the ground. Have you ever, um, has you ever? That's you it right there. Okay, this could be a painting. So he says that retarded joke about the face hitting the dick on the ground joke, right? Mm -hmm. And he thinks he did a clever callback from 20 minutes ago. But if you look at this canvas here, we've got Rick. He's like, <laughs> they must not be smart enough to understand that I've done a callback. And Adam is like, I can't even look at you right now. Yeah, not I mean, this is... <laughs> and then she is looking down. Like, I, not, they cannot even look at him right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Zoom out. Zoom out really quick. Okay, okay. It's literally... It's, you, see, <laughs> you see in, you know, Rick's eyes, he's Judas. 
<laughs> Adam is Christ, you know, looking into Mary Magdalene, who's in, about to weep because she knows what Judas is about to do to him for not going along with the bit of Judaism. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is beautiful. I need to, like, make this a... This is going to be the thumbnail or something. I don't know. I, I'll get it framed as a painting. It's like this... I should have just started with this. This is what the whole episode is. The body language says it all. Rick's yeah. legs are spread and they're not facing him. No. <laughs> He's ready to take it. And then one, two last things. Adam's going to quickly, he's going to dunk on Rick. And then go, that's a rock star bite. Like uh, Fieri. I think what he's asking is, nice. is your mom ever do You connected like, two of them like, together. Like diners oh, driving yes, okay. the dimes. She's like, that's a rock star oh. bite. Yeah. 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 She does that? Cut to the video of I'm my mom doing that format. that everybody knows about. What Ooh. format, dude? Hanging out, having fun? No, because we don't have headphones and there's like little quick things. And I do too many of them. I know that. Like there's, oh, I you're eat, that style autistic? You try, I swear. Do you have to have headphones on or you walking on the street? No. <laughs> Just himself? that you, we can't hear each other well enough. And like, there Are you autistic? Because you don't have the autistic he is. He said he was. I, that's, that, uh, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to have to have autistic conversations on podcasts Well, you've been, you've been doing that. Oh, is that you don't want to be the identi uh, like identity <laughs> thing? I, I but just, this is what Adam does. If you tell him that you're something, he obsesses about it. Like my friend. But now we get to the most contentious topic, which is farting, of course, right? Yes. Other than that, would be like, no, I don't want to smell a On fart. On my podcast, we fart into the microphone. Rick set that precedent, actually. No, actually, Stavros did it on Come Town for seven years. Oh. Well, oh. on our, oh. on our oh. podcast. Sorry. It wasn't my thing. I must have taken it from him. I didn't like it when he did it, actually. Have you ever heard a fart into a microphone that's being amplified? Have you ever farted? Could you just answer my question? You do the same thing with the earrings. Yes. Let's answer my yes. questions. Yes, yes, And you don't think that's funny? No, it's Hearing not, it in a microphone? It doesn't hit enough. Here's what's funny, right? Oh, I'm okay. excited to learn. Okay. Oh. Have you ever farted into your cell phone while Shazam is on and found a new U2 song that you've never heard before? <laughs> I like that joke. Yeah. <laughs> See, even he couldn't, you know, he was like, go ahead, Adam. I'm excited to learn. But even he was like, damn it, that was funny. Yeah. Yeah, so Adam even out shitty jokes him. So th those are all the timestamps I have. I don't know. Yeah, I, the comments have been great to read because, yeah, here we go. Never thought I'd see cool Adam and regular Adam in the same room at the same time. I should have upvoted a lot of these. Hilarious how when Glassman doesn't have the reins on a podcast, he just becomes a bully. Yeah. So see, everybody else is clued in too. I mean, yes. I think these are more Adams fans hating on him, and I guess we would put ourselves in that camp, not you know. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how Rick's audience views this appearance. Yeah, yeah. Is there a Rick Glassman subreddit we could maybe go find out or something? But yeah, I guess moral of the story: it's good that this episode happened, so people can kind of see who Rick Glassman is. If he's not in control, he's going to make himself in control. If he doesn't get what's going on on the podcast, he's going to call time out and uh, just really make everything all about himself. He can't help it. Can't help it. Uh, I guess some big news is Dave Portnoy bought Barstool back for a dollar. So that was big news. Pin Gaming bought them like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. They had like a five-year deal and Dave... Uh, I don't know how much he made in the initial sale, but it was like a $500 million deal. And then Penn had the opportunity to like, I think it was a $2 billion deal from ESPN. So they're just turning the Barstool stuff into ESPN. Dave gets his company back. They're out of the betting biz, the sports book biz. So what was his position when he wasn't the owner? Like after he sold? Yeah. Well, he became like the head of content, but he's been stuck in Miami because that's the only way he can get like way better you know like on his taxes okay so he has okay. to be in miami six months of the year gotcha. so he's like not really been involved at all so now that he's the owner though is he gonna get like i think he's gonna try to be more involved but it's hard to say like if he's gonna do a new show or what like now he's they brought barstool radio back and he just pops on for like 20 minutes mm. and it's just not very good so they're trying to like rein back in like the the old days is that what he originally started was like barstool radio where, like, all those clips of him, like, saying this, you know, crazy things. Yeah, well, he had, they, they had the serious show 
before I think Penn bought them. So they were on Sirius. Okay, okay. Right before and after Howard. No, I don't know. Is his dad gonna get uh his show? show? Yeah. Have you seen his dad before? Uh, you've taught you've told me yeah, about his him. His dad before. used to have a show. No, his dad's just like a stupid old man who he was like a lawyer or something, but he's just He's too old now. Yeah. And you know he's always doing stuff like falling and <laughs> calling into like streams and not knowing how Zoom works mm-hmm. for like the first twenty minutes. Has he like said the N word or anything? Like not understanding <laughs> no, that he's no, like no, live? No. No, just Dave. He's super. He's a super uh, libtard old mm. man, boomer. Damn, he should do a show with uh with Joe Rogan's dad. They should have like the dad's podcast. I would love to see Joe Rogan's dad get more, you know, into the mix. Yeah, yeah. with things. I mean, he's come out. He said Joe's gay. Yeah, he's always wearing that Steelers jersey, and Joe hates football, so they have, <laughs> they have literally nothing to bond with. I know. <laughs> over. Yeah, I. It's funny too because like I, I what his isn't it his sister that's also been in some of those TikToks where it's like, Joe, we know the real you, and guess what, Joe? If you don't invite us on your podcast, we're gonna tell everyone your secrets. <laughs> I I had no idea I had a sister, honestly. I think it's maybe it's a step. It'd be like a stepmom or something. Uh-huh. But it, there's a woman who's in those uh, senior Joe Rogan TikToks. You know, it's crazy. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, when Joe started his podcast, he had Fleshlight. For yes. his sponsor, yeah, yeah, like really early on, probably like episode five or something, and but I, I didn't realize this part that it's actually Joe's asshole that they modeled really? the flashlight after. Yeah, yeah, Joey Diaz uses it, dude. That, that is insane. Do we have like a clip of? Uh, <laughs> well, we'll find it. I, I mean, I know it's out there for sure. I'm 100 percent sure about it. Yeah, yeah, we'll just have to look for it. And jo- but does Joey? Does he know that it's Joe's? A- he has to recognize it, right? <laughs> yeah, he's seen it a lot. I don't know. <laughs> Looks the same. See, I thought like a Joe Rogan pocket pussy, they could just make it life size and it would still be the same size as a pocket pussy. It's just Joe's mouth. Yeah. It's just yeah, Joe's yeah. head. It's yeah. just. <laughs> God, do you imagine if they made like face fuck it things? They probably do, but. I think so. Oh, they do. Cause that. Oh, never mind. Okay. I threw that one out. You know what? No, I will. Uh, Cause I was listening to <laughs> Lemon Party and Ben mentioned like the Goon Cave subreddit and I. Yeah. I thought that gooning just meant coming. No, 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 no. It's quite the opposite, actually. I learned today. Yeah. So I went to the goon cave <laughs> subreddit because we've been talking about, we've been laughing about the Lego Batman, the goon helicopter. Well, and what was it? Ruth, Ruth Bader Goonsberg. Goons- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking credit for that. So um, that could be the name of the podcast right there. Ruth Bader Goonsberg. <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? So I went to the goon cave subreddit and... I, it's like these guys have to be like day traders or something because they will have like nine gaming PCs with like 20 monitors and each monitor has like 10 mini monitors all showing porn. Yeah. And then they have like projectors. They have like three projectors, one on the ceiling, left and the right. And like the the, the captions are just like had a good like eight hour session today. And it's like. It was honestly like one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. I was so disgusted by it. I couldn't believe it. But it's like, who has the money and time to do that? Wait, what do you need money for? To buy the nine computers to oh, have okay, your, your okay, yeah, yeah. and the projectors are not cheap. They're like it's like a thousand dollars for a good projector. Well, now I'm interested in seeing this, but no, I've been aware of gooning for a while. But remember that one time I told you I thought there was like some sort of weird government co op or like you know cooperation with the porn industry. Yeah, yeah. And I told you, they're like, all those hypnosis videos that one time I told yes. you, there's like these, just, the MK it's Ultra. like, become an MK Ultra sissy goon for six hours. Yeah, yeah. And it just would be titles like that. And it's just like, uh, somebody like just damn psychedelic yeah. effects over somebody jerking off. And it's like, you're a little sissy bitch, aren't you? You thought you were straight, but you're gay. Yeah. Damn. No, I think that's what it is. And may, so maybe I, I bet the first posters on the, on the suck, cause I went to the top of all time. Those have to be the federal agents being yeah. like, this is what your goon cave should look like. And some of them will like have their wife naked. They're like, also have my naked wife here. They're not is, all incels? I, I think they're agents. They have to be feds yeah. being like, no. And if you're like a normal person, no, you, you can have your own goon yeah, cave okay, too. Okay. You can only afford a two bedroom uh, apartment. Well, one bedroom will be the goon cave. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, yeah. someone's like, look, I live on the third floor. A cave can be on the third floor as well. So it is it is truly like the most sickening i don't think i've been so like shocked since seeing like two girls one cup it's like that level of it's it's worse too because you think of like actual people investing in it and uh 
sharing it online too like thinking there's nothing wrong with that you know what it all is though it's everybody who's stemmed out it's like the adderall people yeah yeah i'm dead serious adderall will make you do it so i think that's what it is i think it's just a bunch of like 14 year old boys who are like taking adderall than just like like jerking off for 12 hours and being like look what i can do and like they're super productive about it right like they can build right 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 like they're just they're still getting things done just in this hyper you know this fake universe they've created for themselves built a house uh built a shed with my own two hands so i could put in an extra monitor i built i have an a-frame house so an a-frame roof so i can add two projectors (laughs) to my goon cave now so it's it's saddening uh they should show that to like a world war ii veteran there's like a video of this veteran (laughs) who's like this country is someone should just like give give your great grandpa a tour through your goon cave. you know what though if you want to black pill your boomer grandparents or whoever the fuck's a boomer these days i don't know how old anybody is anymore yeah no it's a mindset but if just show them, the, just show them internet history and be like, this is literally a result. You know, this is if you have conservative mm-hmm. ones, you know, you just be like, look what I do all day. I just watch porn in VR and jerk off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Someone and then be like, this is a result of free market capitalism. Yeah. You know, this wasn't socialism that did this to me. That's this true. was a fucking technological revolution brought to you by capitalism, grandma. And look at me. Look how I jerk myself for you <laughs> right here, right now. I've I'm gooning a- with Steven Steven. <laughs> Imagine someone having like multiple monitors of our podcast, but it's just like the same <laughs> logo up. And the other thing I'm wondering too, it's like, do they have audio from every video? So is it just like, you know, does it create like a humming sound because it's so many like, you know, sex sounds? We need to destroy this. If you don't even listen to us, if you masturbate. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. We're totally anti-fap and honestly, it's, it'll serve you, you know. Because you'll have more time to listen to us. Exactly. And subscribe and uh, get a second job and uh, fund our Patreon that will uh, show up someday. Yes. So why have a goon cave when you can have an SNS cave? Everyone's into SNS now. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else on Dave. Oh, if yeah, we're, yeah. If we're off gooning, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're off I mean, gooning. but that's sort of the fun of gooning is you can't stop. Right, You, know, you right. just keep going. You just keep. Well, is gooning the same as edging, right? That's what I, I think, yeah, it's prolonged edging. Edging is like just being at the climax point and, and sustaining it. Yes. Um, <laughs> damn. Dude, this girl I know that I went to high school with, she's on threads. And I saw I saw the link or whatever in her Instagram, you know, because it directly connects. Mm-hmm. And she's like literally doing the thing where she's like, oh, this is like a crazy fun new thing. I'm just tweeting. It's like tweeting, but you're just sending it out into the void. Oh, and geez. then she's like posting like bodybuilding stuff and she's like, I'm trying to give your man a complex. Ugh, I, date, cool. I dated this girl. This is the first girl <laughs> I ever. Well, I told you a story about her recently. Oh, she's the first girl I got to touch her boobs. It was when we were watching Twilight. Nice. <laughs> uh, so she's tr- treating uh, threads like Twitter when it first came out, basically thinking like no one's using it. Yeah. But and, and it is like she's getting no likes on anything. Right. It's like, what's the point? Yeah. But then you listen to this part like, you know. But we, this, we're making this podcast. That's true, <laughs> but listening. we're we're our own audience, and we've got Canic home. He's listening. I hope. Yeah. Uh, he probably will be listening. So, and my wife, who also listens, and then argues. And your wife, by the way, loved the Burt movie. She was actually the reason we she watched did, it. Yes, yes. She was like, I know it's Steve's birthday, but Burt Day. Yeah. She goes, I know it's Steve's birthday, but it's my Burt Day. Can so we make it a birthday? Bert, yeah. So thank you, Sivet, uh, for recommending that movie. She, she was literally laughing the entire time and definitely not sighing yeah. about how much she didn't like it. She was she loved it. You know what I will say real sorry about the movie. What I forgot is that like I was becoming retarded like as I was watching the movie because I there were like five times where I would like say something and I was like, this is going to be a funny joke. And like both of you like looked at me like, shut yeah. up, please shut up. Like and then I realized I was like, wow, I think I'm becoming retarded. One of the jokes I made that I thought was so funny when we were looking at the terrible special effects, I was like, more like special ed effects. <laughs> and they were, and I knew I was like, oh, I need to shut up. So it made me, yeah, took a few days after watching the movie for my brain to. No, I could feel myself slowing down mentally. And also, I just didn't know what was going on or really what the point was. Yeah. There was some other element to the movie I didn't know, but I don't care. We don't have to go, we don't have to go back yeah, to Bert, but. It's the Bert Goon sesh. Gooning on Bert. I bet if you 
so, something's gooning. Someone's gooning. <laughs> someone's he has a guest. gooning. Someone's gooning. <laughs> he has a guest on and just makes them do that. Hey, it's me, Mark Norman. Someone's gooning. <laughs> it's not me. Um, hmm. Speaking uh, of masturbating, yeah, I thought of another funny story. Uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> I was I was with I brought one of my friends to another friend's house. So I brought so we were at my friend Derek's house, and uh, he showed us like his grandma's dildo, like he had found it. And it was like oh, in the geez. no, and it was in this old bag that they used to keep all their Game Boy games in. Uh huh. And so like he's like, dude, look what I found. And he like opens like the third drawer. She wasn't home. We were the only ones there. Mm-hmm. She was like gone or work or something. And he's like, look, look what I found. And she had like this shitty erotica book that was literally like written, you know, like how did anybody masturbate to that? Yeah, yeah. Imagine reading for ten hours like and Amish masturbating. Ankles, the equivalent. Well, yeah, it was just the whole point of it's like he touched me sensually. You know, it's mm-hmm. like where it was a romantic beautiful thing but you're still supposed to masturbate i guess and uh but anyway so he showed us the dildo okay fine whatever but then later we're playing hide and seek and my friend schrader has the nerve he's hiding and he pulls the dildo out and he has it pointed like toward the closet he's like Uh taking the dildo back out of the drawer and put it on the ground or like on a bench or something and pointed it toward the closet so we're like, this is where he's hiding. Classic misdirection. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't even hiding in that direction. He just did it to throw us off. Where was he? I don't remember. Did he like in another to... room? Oh, okay. So he was like saying wherever it was pointing is where. Yeah, but he I'll threw us hiding. off the. I see. Yeah, yeah. So he took the dildo out and like touched it. <laughs> yeah, like That's... someone else's grandma's dildo. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like when your friend pulled it out of the bag, like he was he still careful though? He's like, oh, I won't. I know not to like hold it like this. You know, like no, no, no. It was in like its plastic case. You know, like okay, the one okay. you have to open with like a box cutter. But he took it out of the box. He well, took it out of the box and put oh it my out. Gosh. So he like actually touched his. My friend's grandma's pussy. That's and this disgusting. was my friend's grandma. It's not even his friend's grandma. Wow. So there's too many separations of, uh, or degrees of separation there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is insane. I never even knew any, like, I didn't have any friends who, like, had moms who had sex toys. Or if they did, like, we never knew about it, so. One of my, when I was visiting my aunt in Texas one time, I found her, uh, like, I was at their lake house, and uh, I was like in the house alone and I like was going through her drawers and I found like uh, the sex dice, but I also found uh, like the, just the little tiny vibrating things. I, mm-hmm. I, I guess that's just, I literally thought for a second, the sex dice was uh, I, not to bring up Austin powers again, but you know, when he has the dice like on under his like yeah, rear yeah. view mirror, that's what I was imagining <laughs> at first, but I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, mini like, dildo. Yeah. Well, no, not a mini one, just the vibrator. I don't even know how it works. It's more like those, you know, like a Mexican jumping bean sized okay. sort of thing. And anyway, so like I like was, you know, rummaging through her drawers, you know, looking at her stuff. And then I like accidentally turned it on and I was like, fuck. And then I like couldn't figure out how to turn it <laughs> off. So it was just vibrating in there. And then I like knew they were going to be home within like an hour or so. So I was like, please just like die before yeah. they get home because it's just going off. <laughs> and so then they got home and I like, it was in their room. So like I didn't, you know, want to, <laughs> Like, I, I don't even know if it was still going, but yeah, yeah. I just made sure she didn't go to her room for a while and they must have died or mm. she didn't want to confront me about it later. That's good. Throw it on them to be the one to bring it up. That That's another good tactic. Dude, that's like a nightmare. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't imagine. I would, like, never talk to that <laughs> friend again. I'd just go home and never speak. I think your phone's going off. Leave. Yeah, I heard the phone ringing. I thought, I, I don't know what this egg, this Easter egg thing is. <laughs> Jeez. No, I don't even think... I even like saw a condom ever either. The, the closest thing I have to something like that is like once we had a tornado drill and there was this, uh, he was like a mentally challenged kid. He was like challenged enough to uh, have a para, but not to be taken out of regular classes. Yeah. And because of the tornado <laughs> drill, we had to go to the bathrooms. We went to the girls' bathroom. And of course we were all like looking at like the tampon dispensers oh, and yeah. like laughing. And when the drill was over, he was like, huh. It is just so, un- and this is fifth grade, it is just so unfair that girls have to pay for napkins in the bathroom. So we thought that they had to like pay for the paper towels <laughs> in order to use them. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one day too, it was like snowing and he like hid under his desk because he thought he was going to die, that it was going to be like a blizzard. Yeah. And he got sent home 
And I heard him when he was like walking back to his like little cubby to get his coat. He's like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. <laughs> and I was like, I could just cause a scene like this and like go home. Like maybe I should do that. Damn. I remember this girl, Brianna in like third grade. She uh, came into the classroom and what was her tagline? She used to have this tagline. I knew a few people. Like in, when I was in kindergarten, there's this autis- autistic girl named Alyssa, and she would just, I think I've said this on the pod, where she's like, Alyssa, want to touch your hair? Yeah, yeah. Alyssa, want to <laughs> touch your hair? And I'd be like, no, Alyssa, don't touch my fucking hair. You know, like in pre, I was in preschool, yeah. Uh, kindergarten, yeah. But then, yeah, no, Brianna, what was her thing? Oh, she would just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was, that's kind of what I do on the podcast when I'm just <laughs> trying to get through. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. But that was her thing. Oh. But then, she walked into the room and she like shit and pissed her pants like as she was coming into school. So Ew. yeah, so it was like a conspiracy. If she just wanted to get out of class or something. But oh, I see. I see. It was just a total diaper mess. And she was like an <laughs> idiot though, so it's not that crazy. But for it to have been an unintentional. Damn, I remember one kid like one uh, special ed kid like shit his pants down the hallway and like the janitors had to come and like clean it up. And- <laughs> You could like see some of it still on the floor. It was like a, they like closed off the hallway like a crime scene. <laughs> it was crazy. There was also this girl. Uh, her name was Mandy, and she would just uh, be sitting in class. She like couldn't do anything, so I don't know why they put her in like regular classes. But uh, whenever we were given assignments, she would just there was like a fifty fifty chance if she was going to just start throwing a fit, and it would always start <laughs> off as like I don't know, I don't want to, and then like I don't want to. And she'd like throw a desk and like a chair and like they'd have to get more paras to like get her out of there. And like anytime she would, you could hear it like throughout almost the entire school. So it's like if you'd start to hear it, we would ask like if we could go to the bathroom so we can go see like mm-hmm. where she's freaking out at. And it was crazy. <laughs> we always circle back to the retarded. We do. But it's too, like, there's too many stories, you know? Like, you're never prepared for them in, in your school and stuff. So it's always a shocker. Nothing can ever prepare you for, like, a Down syndrome person or a midget. Every time I see, especially a midget, I, it just, it throws me off. No, and I, yeah, if you see one in person, it's really weird. I've probably not said it on the pod, but my grandma is like terrified of midgets. I mean, it's not even like an over the top. That's how you know it's real. She's just like is clearly disgusted, but it comes from some deep place. Yeah. That she can't even explain. She just shudders. You know, like when you're sitting yeah. like a fucking possum like on the side of the road at night and you're driving and it looks at you and mm-hmm. you just kind of get a chill down your like ew. That's how I feel about that midget family that does like TikToks. And it's like a midget mom and dad they <laughs> yeah, like yeah. reproduced and uh they do these stupid videos where it's like, could you help me reach that? Well, I'm not any taller. He's <laughs> fucking three in a trench coat. Yeah. The oldest yeah. bit ever for them. <laughs> um, block Fest is still going on. Yeah. So at this moment, we've both been blocked by Lex Friedman. Mm-hmm. And I've now been blocked by Eric Weinstein. Yeah, the intellectual dark web. They don't like what we have to say. So clearly we're asking the right questions to well, Lex. To be fair, I was not asking. Uh, you were showing data. You were showing. I'm pulling up my, my tweet right now. Yeah, Stephen, Sorry, I sent it in the group chat. Steven was showing the, the maps on Eric Weinstein's face and some of the weird, some of the unique discoveries when you would zoom in on Eric Weinstein's face, what would be found. And Eric Weinstein... Sorry, I have to scroll through a bunch of vacation photos. His reaction to that data was to block Steven. I said... I, I don't even remember what he was on or what he tweeted, but I just tweeted this at Eric Weinstein. I said, his head is a wart with more warts on it. I'm starting to think the warts are on his brain. I want to go <laughs> full wart cost and pop all six million of them. Because I was doing a count, and that's like a rough estimate of yeah. how many. I mean, it could be 10, it could be six million. But I think in the next season of Fortnite, they're going to put Eric Weinstein's head yeah. and face in Fortnite. Yeah, in the Holocaust Museum. Yeah. So No, they're going to tear it down so they can put that one there. So. They should do a, like a 360 like global whack-a-mole where you pop out of his mouth and you yeah, have to pop yeah. all the different warts on his face. They you, Have you seen that Las Vegas, that sphere, that like screen sphere? Oh, yeah, yeah. They should just put Eric Weinstein's head in that so everyone <laughs> yeah. can experience all of his disgusting warts. Dude, that would be disgusting. Didn't he like do something crazy? He said something crazy on Joe Rogan's podcast last. I think he's in the same line of thinking as Jordan Peterson about like the troll demons. 
It's something like that. I don't remember, but I think he never says anything interesting, and it's just shit that he his spins all day thinking about, and then it has like no real, no real world ramifications or. Yeah. And then him just sucking Do- Joe's dick or whatever Joe Rogan's dick all the time. Yeah. So. Which is like, every, so every time he's on the show, it's like, well, we already know what we're getting. You're going to get, he's going to put on his pocket pussy, the Joe Rogan pocket pussy. Uh, was he the one who had all those students yelling at him in that viral video or was it Brett? Weinstein? No, I think it was his brother, Brett. Okay. So because he, that was the whole, like, if you're white, don't come to school the next day. Yeah. Damn, what a time. Mm-hmm. Evergreen College or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Community college that he, he teaches at. So You see this Jew face thing, by the way? No. So Bradley Cooper's playing oh, uh, Leonard oh. Bernstein and everybody. You want to just tell it? No. No. Uh, <laughs> Bradley Cooper is playing Leonard Bernstein, and apparently they're going to give him a big prosthetic beak. Yeah, and people yeah, are yeah. calling it Jew face, which is so much worse than blackface. Right, like sounding like Jew, Jew face, face sounds like a slur. That could, yeah, that's the insult. Blackface sounds like you're coming to a black person's defense. Like, hey, don't do blackface. Jew face sounds like you're calling them Jew face. Yeah, yeah. 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 They could. I thought it would be gold face. That's like a better. Is Bradley yeah. Cooper Jewish? Uh, I don't think so, but it could be like one of those weird halvesies that you didn't know about. I bet it's only going to be about this stupid ass article. He's not Jewish. Okay. Damn. What's so wrong about that? You know, it's not. He wants to look like the character. That's like not even that bad. Well, you know, it's crazy. Is Leonard Bernstein doesn't even have a super Jewy nose. Yeah. That's him I on guess the left. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. I Let's, mean, that's like, that could be anybody's yeah, nose. Yeah, and this nose could, yeah, they've got, they already it's have not, a similar nose. Yeah, it's not different enough to warrant yeah. putting on a prosthetic, so I almost I see, I see it. now. Damn. You want, I wonder if that was his idea. Well, there, he's got a schnoz, I guess. No, but. that's Bradley. Oh, fuck, Yeah, exactly. See? <laughs> they really just wanted to let you know, in case you didn't know Bernstein was yeah. Jewish. Dude, his nose is worse <laughs> than Bernstein has a totally normal nose. <laughs> Wow, are they gonna? I wonder if they're gonna make that change, or if this movie's like still filming, or what the deal is. But that is crazy. That's funny. Well, do they put stuff out until it's like in post production, like this, like full oh, trailers true. and stuff? I don't know if it was a full trailer, or just I guess as teaser, but I don't know what how much came out. Yeah, I don't know. That's. I feel like the people making the movie should know better by now, though. Maybe they, maybe it's part of the marketing or something. Mm-hmm. They, they always, there has to be some element now to where news outlets can pick up on it, so it's like free publicity or something. Yeah. I don't know. No one in the right mind would ever suggest to do something like that. You would just get a Jewish actor, but I don't know. <laughs> Phantom of the Slopra. That's I don't really have a bit fleshed out for that. Phantom of the Slopra and. Oppenheimer and Anthony, Oppie and Anthony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the nuclear bomb is just Anthony saying the N word. Yes, yeah. I I said on the last episode, uh, uh, Oppenheimer invented the A bomb, and then Anthony invented <laughs> okay. the N bomb. Was what I had. Oh my bad. That's okay. I only knew that because I re-listened to it and just so happened to like skip to that part. But let's see if i've got anything else i don't i mean i just have this uh, this is also a not non so not so fleshed out thought but what is with the conservatives conservatives are like trying to take over the music industry which is something that we've covered from day 1 of steven steven it's true the very first episode we ever did was tim uh, pools linkin park yes song and now we've got what? Try that in a small town. Try that already in a small town. Steven Crowder did a new song where he's uh, he's like in a toga, so mm-hmm. he can look and act gay. And then the guitar guy, what's that guy? The mountain man who's like working the, is hard. The one that Joe Rogan shared. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know his name. Apparently, yeah, all uh, conservatives are trying to prop him up. Matt Walsh did a whole thing about defending him because he's like, of course, the media is saying he's a, uh, a conservative. And uh, what was I feel like there's another interesting tidbit about it. I don't know. But it's like, what's the what? You know, what's the deal with them? Why are <laughs> yeah, they trying to take know. over music? I don't know. I don't really understand it. I it's more it's just crazy that people get behind it i don't know i haven't talked yeah. to anybody though in real life about 
the try that in a small town, you know? Yeah. Because they're trying to make like on Fox News, they're just, just like the intro song for all their shows. Right. At this point. So, I, I mean, but I don't know anybody that's actually listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. Same with the f- stupid ass mountain song. Nobody's heard the Crowder song, at least. No. And nobody, no. I don't know how anybody listens to Tim Pool. Seriously. There was a clip of him uh, re- that I saw on Twitter. I followed it's Tim Pool News, so people just clip the stupid shit that he says now. And he was saying that like he only pets his cat to show that he's <laughs> like the master of the house. He's <laughs> so stupid. He's like, I like my cat, but I don't find my cat cute. I only pet the cat to show that I'm in charge. But it's like, if you thought the cat was cute, or like you think the cat's cute, that's why you have the cat. You yeah. Know? Like that'd be a that'd be a business liability. The cat can only bring harm to the house if you didn't love the cat, you idiot. But I don't know. Who else do we hate? Um, <laughs> Santino. No, I don't yeah. have anything to say. <laughs> He's been under the radar. He hasn't been doing much. He's gone. Well, Bert has been re- is re releasing old episodes now of Something's Gooning. So yeah. it's someone's gooning. Yeah. He had, yeah, we watched uh, Theo Vaughn and Bird on there, and we realized that it was a rerun. We thought it was new stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> Are we, uh, I think I'm done. I'm out of steam. Yeah, I think that is about it. We've got the dildo story in. That was the only thing I really cared about today. Mm-hmm. And I want to wing No, I'm, I'm out of stuff. All right, we will see you next week, and that's a fact. We'll be here.